huge round of applause for Projecta for joining us here tonight and making this evening even more special. You know, we're awarding the startup founders here today and Web3 founders. So, and I think that your presence as a founder, as an entrepreneur, she's 29, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you. And within that, she's a, she's been a radio jockey. She's an influencer. She's a YouTuber. She's a entrepreneur. She's now an actor. And she's also a climate crusader. <laughs> she's single also. She's not single, sorry. <laughs> what do you actually just, uh, you know, matter of interest, what do you plan to do when you're old since you've pretty much done everything by 29? Most people don't do it in a lifetime, what she's done, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So on a lighter note, if you know, if you want to share your plans for a later so, lifetime, that would be nice. That was, that was a very flattering introduction. Thank <laughs> you. You're very sweet. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Thank you so much uh, for having me here. It's a pleasure. Um, honestly, I did not know that all these avenues would open up for me when I started creating content on YouTube eight years ago. So everything is coming to me as a surprise. I had no clue any of this was even possible. So I'm taking it as it goes. Honestly, I have no clue what, what I have no plans. Well, that's, that's the way life should be lived. You know, you take day as it comes and then it sort of becomes your life and that's so beautiful. And I, she's lived a beautiful journey. Uh, doing so much and I know I mean you know it's easier said than done there's so much hustle to it and you I remember reading that you said that radio jockey you wanted to be a radio jockey all the time and then you figured that you know this was really not the life you wanted to live I and mean I had to figure because I got fired <laughs> <laughs> um, I was almost a little too uh, confident about being a radio jockey till I actually became one and realized that I suck so yeah but how did you sort of you know, I mean, while I understand, you know, because the space was so new in 2015, uh, becoming a YouTuber, honestly, nobody knew who was in YouTube, what they were going to expect five years down the line. But how did you sort of artistically manage it? I mean, you know, I mean, making content is very difficult when you do have to do it on day on day, maybe, you know, think about it hour on hour. Yeah. So how do you sort of artistically put this all together and say that, okay, look, you know, this is what I want to talk about today. I mean, a lot of us still cannot figure it out, you know, how to produce content and keep our audience hooked and engaged every day. You know, I really wish there was a more thought out process, then I would have a better answer to give <laughs> at places like this. Because every time this question comes and I think about, I was 21 when I started, so I was obviously very, very clueless. Like you said, YouTube was so new, nobody knew what was going on. Um, and even still, I feel like the digital space is so customized creator to creator. There's not really a roadmap you can follow or there's not really a blueprint um, that will assure success or uh, virality for that matter. But uh, I think after working in radio for a year, and I was, I was 11 when I decided I want to be a radio jockey. Wow. I spent all my teenage uh, only prepping to be a radio jockey. And uh, when I became one and then I failed at it, I was so lost at that point, anything would have been um, fun for me because I, I hated my job at the radio station. I hated waking up every day. I used to look for like newer excuses every morning, ki aaj ka bolu ki, you know, this is why I don't want to go to work today. But so after a, like after a year of that, when I started creating content and I realized that, oh, I don't have to take my scripts to anybody. I don't have to get it approved. If I fail, I get to like try again next week. I think that process got very addicting, uh, addictive for me. Um, so the first couple of years, I was just having fun. I really wish I, I had more thought to it, but there wasn't. And now, uh, when I look at it, I'm just like, I'm so glad I didn't, because I feel like with content, if you overthink it, you always end up kind of missing the point every now and then. So it took me a few, I, I feel like I'm still finding my feet with content, because everything keeps changing, the platform's changing, my audience is changing every single day. So, um, I think we're all, and I'm sure there's a lot of creators we have with us today, so I think we'll all agree that we're still kind of finding our feet with what's going on. We're all a little bit of creator creators, in all yeah. of us, and we're still, I think, finding uh, our mojo out there. <laughs> you found it. <laughs> so, you know, um, so in, in, in startup world, the founder always sort of swears by a mentor, and, uh, you know, he or she always thinks that, you know, because they were mentored at some point of time by someone which helped them find their way, as you said, you know, you hated your job so and of course now in your job you meet so many people you meet you know you met Bill Gates recently and then of course you were at Davos and you met uh, so many important people out there so do you 
I mean, do you feel that a mentor or somebody, not even a mentor, or somebody played a pivotal role in your life to help you find what you did today? Many, many people did. I, I, I'm very blessed to have um, friends and family in my team in a way that kind of, they've always been my sounding board. And uh, for example, right from the beginning, my parents have been my biggest support because every day I used to wake up till I told them I want to be a radio jockey. Before that, every day I used to wake up and have a new profession. I'm like, okay, today I want to be an interior designer. And I remember it was so important for me in those growing up years because not once uh, did my parents ever get back with, you know, I don't think that's a good idea. Or do you want to rethink it? Do you want to try something else? How about that thing? You were better at that. Everything I threw at them, they're like, yeah, it's fine. Go for it. You'll, and I think that was so important for me uh, to have the confidence to even get up and be like, okay, now I don't want to be a radio jockey. I want to be a content creator. Sorry. Oh, that burp was stuck for a long time. My bad. <laughs> who is it? Who, who was whistling? I want to know that. Okay. Go for it. I went for it, bro. Um, sorry. So yeah, my parents have been, my sister, uh, who's been uh, my constant support through everything. Uh, and then I happened to meet my team, uh, who just were, you know, when, when it just fits, you meet somebody and you're like, okay, you know what, please don't leave me. <laughs> Let's spend eternity together because I need you. Uh, my friends, I have a very small circle of friends and uh, it stayed like that since school and I'm very grateful for them. So it's not one, I think I have a bunch of people. Sorry? <laughs> Subtitles for all the... <laughs> okay. So she's also been, uh, uh, she's joined Bollywood as well. So she came in this movie. Juk Juk Jio, right? She started her career from there and now she's doing like a bunch of Netflix series and a series. I actually started series. with Netflix. Yeah, you started yeah. with Netflix and now you're doing a tele series as well. Um, tele series. Okay. So some it was a tele play. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, I mean, and we love Bollywood. I mean, yeah, you know, same. for everybody same. out here, we can vouch that Bollywood is really what we love and what we love to watch in our evenings. So, you know, do you feel any different as a content creator now that you've moved to Bollywood into films? And do they conflict or do they sort of, you know, both have two separate things and you want to continue to do both? I think, and I've always said this, I think it's a great time for content uh, because the lines are, oh, sorry. The lines are very blurry. Right now it's just a pool of content and it's up to the audience what they want to watch. Uh, do you want to watch a film on Netflix or on Prime or do you want to go to the theatres? Do you want to watch it for free on YouTube? Like what's going on? It's up to you. Uh, so it's a great time for content but uh, obviously it was very different for me because I remember when I was on my first film set when we were shooting Mismatched in 2019. It's a show on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, please watch it. We've got two seasons. Thank you. Okay. Um, so when I was on... I realized that I was so used to playing characters that I had written that that was one of my biggest barriers in the beginning. I was like, how am I going to play a character that I haven't written? Uh, also, when you're shooting all your content by yourself, when you reach set, you want to know where the camera is, what the lighting is, is everybody on, like you have to take care of everything. But I, I, it was so much fun for me because I was like, hey, I reached this set and I don't have to worry about anything else. I just go say my lines. Um, do it a few more times if you need more takes and then that's that. Um, so that was, it was very new, but also it was a lot of, uh, it was a lot of libert liberty in a way where I didn't have to kind of worry about having control over every aspect of it. Right. And now what do you like more? <gasps> oh, I can't choose. <laughs> I can't choose. Uh, one of my directors told me, Akash, who keeps denying that he said this to me, but I'm pretty sure he did, where he was like, being on a film set is like tasting blood. Like if you've tasted it once, you're gonna, you can't stay off a film set. But at the same time, I love creating content and I love writing sketches or writing blogs or writing other things that uh, kind of help me keep going on creatively. So I really can't choose. I just, I just feel very grateful that I'm in, a point, I'm in a point in my life where I don't have to choose. So I get to do both. Does the content come spontaneously to you or do you have some kind of a method with which you say that this week we're going to do this kind of content? I think most of it is spontaneous with, because I've always said this, that the kind of comedy that I do, it's not going to be ha-ha funny. It's very like, oh, oh my God, it's so funny. That happens to me all the time. Uh, I, I like to tap into that because I also don't think I'm a comedian, so I can't write jokes. Um, but 
uh, it comes also I have a team now which kind of helps me helps me by like sitting down brainstorming with me so it's much easier now but it started off very spontaneous yeah see remember that for all of you who are making content out there uh, so recently you've also sort of taken up climate change as uh, you know as part of your UN um, as an ambassador to UN for climate change so how what sort of got you going there I mean what was it that brought you to make a difference to the climate change in the world so I, I think it was 2017, no, 2015, when I started speaking about um, things that were close to my heart when it comes to a more social context. I started talking about body shaming and med mental health and stuff like that. That kind of um, snowballed into girls' education, uh, gender equality. That's YouTube had a huge role to play in putting me at these platforms where I got to learn and meet new people and realize that, oh, I can speak here and have an impact. And I think that's when UNDP and I got into a conversation, which was very, very recent. Climate change is a very recent conversation yeah. for me. And um, that's when I realized that I am now in a position where I have reach and I have impact. And even though I don't have the experience in uh, the field of climate, working in the field of climate change, I can use my platforms to amplify voices that already have been doing a lot of work. And that's where kind of UNDP and I got together. Uh, so I was very happy that I got to do that. I'm very happy to be no, a part no, of that No, no, and I think sustainability is something we all need to be passionate about if we want to live on this earth. So yeah. I think... I also feel like the conversations around sustainability and climate change sometimes get so complicated because they move from one boardroom to one boardroom, you know what I mean? Uh, it's a lot of people in suits talking languages that people in suits talk. Um, this doesn't count as a suit, so. Um, I, I, what I like to come in and do is like kind of simplify that conversation and kind of make it bite-sized so it's easier for my younger audience to consume and adapt to. And I mean, honestly, reaching out to a 20-year-old audience, so you have a very young audience who sort of, uh, you in, in your uh, larger sort of uh, zone. And making content for them is anyway very difficult. They're, they're so gullible, they change their mind every day. So, <laughs> you know, you've got a tough job out there. So I know that recently you've also turned an entrepreneur and you've done some new merch. Uh, you know, you're doing a bunch of things in fashion and... Uh, other spaces. So you want to tell us a little more about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, I wanted to do merch for a very long time, but uh, we tried a couple of things, but somehow I, also I don't have the best business acumen. I don't think I'm very smart when it comes to the technical side of things when it comes to business, but I have a team that's very good at it. I like to stay on the fun, like, hey, let's put this on a t-shirt side of it. <laughs> Um, so I, I finally happened to meet and collaborate with a team that kind of got what I wanted to do and were meeting me midway. So on my, a couple years ago, it's very new, we are still learning, uh, but I think on my 28th birthday is when we launched uh, Mostly Seen's merch Bay side of things. And do you plan to make it bigger? in the? I do, yes, I'm hoping. Uh, that it grows, but again, uh, like I said, I'm a little slow with it because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to take baby steps, I'm trying to see what works, what doesn't work. I don't want to overcome it because it comes with investment and money and I'm just like, oh my god. Um, so I'm trying to take baby steps, but hopefully, yeah, we've got a couple of really fun plans for this year, so I'm looking forward to it. Sure. So we'll also take a couple of questions from the audience. Quick ones, guys. No comments, huh? Just quick questions. Um, but. My final question is, you know, now that you've sort of um, found your way around so many different things that you're doing, um, any, any particular moment that you remember which you want to share with us or some content which probably strikes you and, you know, it was your wow moment or you thought... There's two. Can I share yeah, two? Sure, please. Go. So one was in 2018. Uh, we were going to do a meet and greet in Mumbai, okay? And um, I, I'd done a couple of meet and greets before, so I was like... I remember like a hundred people coming to that meet and greet. Um, so I was like, okay, let's prepare for maybe 500. Uh, but things got out of hand. But the wow moment was when I actually went on stage and I saw close to 8,000 people who turned up. And that was one of those days in my life where I was just like, this can't be real. This can't be real. Like who paid them? Why did they not do anything else but chose to come and spend their time here? That was one, number one moment forever. I think number two was when... Um, 
I got to shoot with uh, Michelle Obama for Girls Education. I think that was a huge moment for me. Uh, when she walked in, she gave me a hug. She knew my name and everything. And I was just like, this is crazy. So I think these two days uh, have to be my favorite at work yeah, so far. No, no, it's always those stay with you, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah.